WeWork, once a venture capital darling, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The filing marks a stunning reversal for the desk rental giant that was once valued at $47 billion. WeWork was the poster child of the unsustainable startup frenzy of the 2010s. A rise and fall so dramatic, it was characterized in an Apple TV series. Who wins in a fight? The smart guy or the crazy guy? Are you crazy enough? I may be, I may be. Here's how WeWork went from being one of the country's most valuable startups to a bankrupt penny stock, now worth a fraction of its peak value. WeWork, co-founded by Adam Newman, specialized in leasing shared workspaces in metropolitan areas around the world. We're a company that builds communities. We have our mission, our main thing that we do is curate and create culture. WeWork was founded in 2010, right after the global financial crisis, and it basically seized on this casualization of, of the workforce that was emerging after that. WeWork raked in funding from a roster of major investors, from venture capital firm Benchmark Capital to banks like J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. The founder, Adam Newman, was able to convince all of these people that, that WeWork was a disruptive tech company that, that was going to do to the office market what, what Facebook did to, to <laughs> sort of social media and, and, and what Uber did to, to uh, transportation. They ended up raising over $10 billion for what was effectively a real estate company worth a lot less than $10 billion. In 2019, WeWork hit a peak valuation of $47 billion and took steps towards an initial public offering. At the time, the private tech startups were seen as this really sort of powerful engine of the future economy, and there was a lot of optimism about them. So they get ready to go public and sort of reveal their numbers to the world, and people kind of wake up. While WeWork's revenue was growing, so were its expenses. Despite raking in billions in funding, WeWork had yet to announce a profit since its founding in 2010. There were also all of these, these conflicts of interest and, and related party transactions that are really concerning for investors in the IPO documents. So Adam Newman owns stakes in four buildings that he leased to WeWork, and so he's on both sides of the, those deals. On top of concerns about WeWork from public market investors, questions over Newman's leadership style also threatened the company. Adam Newman had this really chaotic approach to management. One day he would decide that 20% that of the staff, the, the bottom 20% needed to be fired every year. Adam was really into spending in all these eclectic ways. They had a, a small unit in WeWork that was making self-driving robots to go around and drop mail off at people. They bought a $63 million jet that Adam directed and was a huge fan of. It was just like ex one excess after the other at its peak. WeWork ultimately pulled their 2019 IPO, and shortly after, Newman resigned as CEO, walking away with more than $1 billion from SoftBank, a tech investor that acquired WeWork. It was such an extraordinary amount of money for someone who had actually really destroyed so much value after creating it. I think that's a, a stain that still stays with him. When you sort of mention Adam Newman and WeWork, people often say, like, isn't that the guy who got really rich uh, while investors lost everything? And, and, and that's accurate. Not long after Newman's departure, COVID-19 spread across the globe. Demand for office space decreased, rent dropped, and WeWork's entire business model became its own Achilles heel. So they just have these rents that are from a different era that they're paying while their tenants are paying them a lot less. They have been burning through $300 million a quarter of cash, four years after pledging to restructure, to rationalize. It's just completely untenable. WeWork filed for bankruptcy barely four years after the company reached its peak valuation, and more than two years after it went public under new leadership in 2021. The tank of cash that once overflowed ran out. They were never able to, to make a, a profitable business. It's an extraordinary tale in that they, they raised over 16 billion of equity and debt over 13 years. But this may not be the end of WeWork's story. The business will likely go on. They're going to need to cancel a ton of leases, cancel their debt, and presumably can come out of this a, a real business uh, that can make money. They have some locations where it's profitable, but it's going to need a lot of work in bankruptcy court to get there. 